Now, Andy Warhol is one of the best-known artists of the 20th century, but an exhibition of photographs gives new insight into his life before he became famous. They were taken by the American photographer William John Kennedy, and they're also the subject of a documentary. This short clip helps explain what it's all about. The imagery of the 1960s falls into two categories, the art and the turmoil, both clearly defining the times. In this world of now familiar images, it's rare to find something iconic, something that elegantly defines a moment in time. But every once in a while, something surfaces that's a brilliant exception to that rule. And here is where our story begins. Well, to tell us more about that story, I'm joined by Michael Huter, who made that film, and Patrick Moore, who's the managing director of the Andy Warhol Museum in the United States. Michael, I'll come to you first. What is this collection that we've got here that was taken by Kennedy? It's a collection of photographs that were shot by William John Kennedy in the early 60s, uh, when Warhol, Robert Indiana, the famed love artist, were right on the cusp of fame. Uh, they really weren't very well known at that time, and uh, Kennedy happened to be there to capture them with some of their most iconic works. So why is this so important and so interesting as a historical collection, Patrick? Well, for the museum, it's very hard to actually tell the story of Andy Warhol. People knew that Andy went to Studio 54. They knew that he painted Marilyn Monroe, but they don't really know Andy as a person. And these photographs really reveal Andy as a portrait, cumulatively. So when our curators selected these five images as a benefit edition for the museum, we felt that they really captured something about Andy as a person. We're going to see some of those images in a moment, but first I'd just like to hear William John Kennedy himself talking in the documentary about how he came to take these photographs. Let's take a look. I was working in the studio one afternoon, and the phone rang. Marie answered the phone and she said that Andy Warhol was on the phone. When Andy Warhol called, he was not the huge international icon that he became. He was in the world of advertising, the same area that Bill was beginning to enter. He was really just beginning to get into the fine arts world. She handed the phone to me and I said, is this Andy Warhol? And he said, yes. And I realized because of the tone of his voice and everything and sincerity, this was Andy Warhol. The first time I shot Andy, we were standing in the factory next to him, rolled up, they were 50 different pieces of acetate. So he reached over and he said, these are the proofs of all of my silk screening. He pulled out this one rolled up acetate, unrolled it, and sure enough, this gigantic image of Marilyn appeared. That was the reason that I had him stand behind the image, knowing that it was transparent, and you know, totally incorporating his image with hers. And that was my first involvement with shooting Andy Warhol at the factory. And what's so incredible about these photos, seeing that iconic Marilyn image, we're seeing the making of it really, aren't we? Well, yeah, actually what you see there is the acetate that was used uh, to make his Marilyn Monroe paintings. Yeah. And uh, they were there at the factory, rolled up, and uh, he had asked Andy to uh, uh, open them up and pull one out, and he did, and of course unfurled uh, the acetate of Marilyn and shot that image, and it was uh, just an amazing moment to capture that. You've spoken to Kennedy a lot of times. Did he realize at the time how significant it was what he was shooting? Yeah, he felt the energy. You know, he often speaks about when he would go into the factory, uh, uh, just uh, the energy uh, that Warhol was emitting and what was taking place. He knew that it was going to be important. He really felt like in the future these images would be significant in some way. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to look at it was the Kennedy assassination. Marilyn Monroe had. Uh, uh, recently deceased, and there was so much going on. It was a tumultuous period, yeah. and uh, Warhol was capturing some of those moments in a very unique way. Uh, and, and, and it's, it's really fascinating. Patrick, you talk about how it's quite difficult as a museum to tell the story of Andy Warhol. What do we learn from these images that we didn't know before? We can see some of them coming up now. We learned that the best way to see Andy is through his work. He was quite a guarded person. He was quite a vulnerable person. So looking out through Marilyn's image, looking out through his own self-portrait, we knew that Andy's most vulnerable, uh, his, the way that he liked to see, be seen, was in relationship to his artwork. So he was perfectly willing to put it on a sandwich board of his own self-portrait to go out into the street, to stand in front of his uh, flower painting while it was still wet, 
uh, and a field of flowers to be out there in the world with his own work. Not so much on his own, but with, with his work, he had a certain self-confidence. And did you know that this group of photos existed? When you found out about it, how exciting was that? Well, not until Michael came to us, but we were very excited because there were very few images that showed the process of making the work, especially with the acetate of Marilyn. And this image where he's shown um, with a grid of portraits that he made of Watson Powell for the American Republic Insurance Company shows Andy with an insurance salesman, an insurance company executive. But look at them, they're two businessmen, two different kinds of businessmen. Andy was a businessman himself, selling his art. And when you speak to Kennedy about, about this, he, was he aware after all these years that he had these photos? Had he forgotten about it? Why have they only just come out? No, he tucked them away in a box and went on to be a very successful commercial photographer. So, you know, it was the 1960s. Uh, they weren't famous at the moment, so mm -hmm. it wasn't as important. Uh, and, uh, you know, one day uh, when they were cleaning out the closet, uh, his wife Marie had almost thrown the box of them away Gosh. and said, wait a minute, what's in that box? and uh, started to look more intently at the images. And uh, of course, then I got involved and uh, uh, we uh, you know, just were shocked to see uh, what the images were and that they had sat you know, dormant for so long. And it was also important uh, for Kennedy to uh, utilize these in some way uh, to give back to the Warhol legacy. Yeah. So we utilized uh, uh, five of the most important images under the guidance of the museum to create a benefit addition for them. Uh, that's uh, something people, uh, if they're interested in, yeah. can contact the uh, Warhol Museum. Very briefly, Patrick, we saw that quote there from Andy Warhol, in the future everyone will have their 15 minutes of fame. His has certainly lasted longer than that. What's his enduring appeal, do you think? Because he presaged so many things that are important to us. Celebrity culture, it's at the very heart of our culture today. The idea that we would look at images again and again and again, consume images, con images of war. Not only things that were beautiful, but very disturbing. Warhol invented all of that. So everything that's at the heart of our culture today, Warhol was already talking about in the 1960s. Absolutely. Well, it's a very exciting collection for Warhol fans and for the uh, museum. Thanks both very much for coming on and talking about it.